This is Flash at the Dork Table on Saturday, the 1st of June, 2019. Here on the RealLibertyMedia.com, I like to do my Saturday Dork Table. Usually I have a hostage. Well, occasionally I have a hostage. Today, I am hostageless. So, we're going to see what happens. I have no idea. And I'd like to say hey to uh, the folks, the bots and the bodies that participate in the chat room. We're all, yeah, it's like the nucleus of the site. But there's a lot of stuff on the site besides just the chat room. Grim's got radio. And he's got um, other forms of entertainment to pursue for your reading and listening enjoyment here on RealLibertyMedia.com. Anyway, thanks, Grim, for uh, setting me right on the headphone thing one more time. Uh, I think I've come to the end of my disastrous uh, troubles of getting on the radio. So you're going to say hey to Barman, Beetle, Grimnir, Moose Girl, DC Brackets, Anti, Anti Underscore, Asmo, Chalcedony, Graham Z, IB Don C, Java Doctor 2, Meister Brow, Ponder Gander, Miss Kate, Rob Works, Trust No One, Vanna White, Weather Dork, Phantom, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Dork Cakes, Hey Mental, uh, Me, Frumped, Frumpy, Ha, Jay's Nines, Jay's Kiss, Mmm, Sock Puppet, Smodaz, and Vinny Tawaris. And that's the lineup today. It's uh, June, so guess what happens in the summertime? Especially on a Saturday, is people that have been homebound all freaking winter and spring, they can catch up today and go out and do their necessary responsibilities with the society they live in. Because traveling on a Saturday in the sunshine is kind of preferable. I like to do it. I went out with Hannah today and, well, took a little stroll. So, hmm. even I enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> anyway, uh, what I've got for you guys today on the Dark Table Podcast is uh, I found some interesting links to me. Of course, to me. <laughs> that doesn't always go very far. My taste in links is singular at best. Few people like the stuff I like, but I'm not going to win any popularity contests with the stuff I post, especially on Real Liberty Media or Twitter or wherever else I would try to post it. Minds.com it doesn't it doesn't attract. You know, the, the stuff that attracts my attention seems to repel the modern day guy. You know, they... They want to praise Trump, and we're going to attack the enemy, and the prices are good, jobs are up, all that horse shit, you know. And ignore the, the really important stuff like, hmm, everything else. <laughs> so I think I'll take an opportunity to do it for you today. <laughs> and I found a link on regenerative farming. Now go figure. But Cirque and me have been doing a little dabbling out in the garden a couple of times. With growing a few little things here, strawberries and cucumbers, such such like that, and uh, the bigger you know, the more this catches on, the more other people do what you're doing, the more comfortable it seems that you are doing what you're doing. So because I've got this gardening instant, you know, in, interest, blah blah blah. Uh, when I saw this link, it kind of caught my attention, and I read a little bit of it, but I didn't do the didn't read the whole link first. So, I'm going to post a copy. Ah, see, I'm getting there. I'll post a copy up front. That way, if you want to go do dishes or get a cup of coffee or something while I'm reading this link, it doesn't interest you. Then, this is the time to, to do that. Anyway, here we go. It says, now the story at a glance, it's got a little box with some highlights. The documentary, film Farmer's footprint slash regeneration the beginning highlights the failure of chemical dependent agriculture and how through regenerative farming America's farmers can build healthy soil restore ecosystems and promote human health sounds just like a fucking TV ad so far 
But what I've read, I, I agree or believe what I've read with so far, two whole lines. So they're doing pretty good. The film features Alan Williams, Ph.D., a sixth-generation family farmer who has consulted with more than 4,200 farmers and ranchers in the U.S. on soil health, cover cropping, livestock integration, grazing management, and other regenerative agri <laughs> agriculture practices. Whoa, try saying that quickly, huh? So, hey, cakes. Uh, did I mention? Yeah, I don't think I mentioned you. Went, yeah, there you are. Well, a late hello to Mr. Mental Health. Hmm. And I will continue with my list. Uh, the film features Dr. Zach Bush, a triple board certified physician with expertise in internal medicine, endocrinology, and mo metabolism and hospice palliative care who believes industrial farming is one of the main drivers of cancer and chronic disease. Well, these guys don't want to live very long, do they? An explosion of cancer incidents in the U.S. correlates with the introduction of glyphosate, the active ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup weed killer on food crops. Now, here goes the story. Now, the feature film Farmer's Footprint Regeneration, The Beginning, highlights the failure. Oh, I just read that. Hey, wait a minute. They're tricking me. I'm going to move on to another paragraph just to stop looking like I'm not reading it right. Grass-fed beef champion teaches farmers how to go regenerative. I sent Vinny a copy of this because Vinny's actually been out there on the range with the you know the horses and the cattle and all done all that shit hands on like cowboy tech i think cowboy tech gets out there and he wrestles an animal once in a while just for to make sure he doesn't forget how maybe mental is probably you, you ever do any work with the animals mental or are you just a builder and vegetarian based guy well not vegetarian but you like your veggies but I never did ask you if you ever worked out with the animals on the range, on the farm, on the ranch, shit like that. Because uh, there's a lot of people on the RLM that have got that uh, that history of being raised on the ranch or the farm. And some people don't like it, and some people do. And just like anything else, matter of freaking taste. So, I will start this here thing off with... The film begins with Williams recounting how many, how, how many, how when he was growing up, 90% of what they all, what they ate came from the farm. Over time, the, with pressure from conventional agriculture, his family began to change the way they farmed. They found themselves needing things they never needed before, such as an increase in agrochemicals, synthetic fertilizers, and Pharmaceutical drugs for livestock, including antibiotics and feed supplements. I was convinced I had to keep up with the times, says Williams. But as things progressed, he realized his farm was having more and more problems. In spite of all the research, the imp implementation of new crop chemicals fertilizers, and livestock drugs, things on the farm were degenerating, he says. Instead of solving their problems, Williams realized industrial farming practices were constantly putting a tiny bandage on a, ga a gushing wound. Ah, see, the truth comes out somewhere. Now, I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to argue about this, be on the side of Big Agro. Look at how much they produce. Forget how they do it. Just that they do it is all that matters. <laughs> so, suckers. Anyway, back to my epic story about regeneration. Williams is a sixth generation farmer turned regenerative agriculture consultant. He holds a bachelor's and master's degree in animal science from Clemson University and a Ph.D. in livestock genetics from LSU. Wow. Okay. School. 
I I still to this day, just because people have titles and little letters after their name, the proof is in their work, not what they tell you they're going to freaking do. But what can you show me that you've done? Now, we'll get to that some other time, but eh, back to my story. Williams has written more than 400 scientific articles as well as consulted with more than 4,200 farmers and ranchers in the U.S. on topics such as soil health. Oh, I read that already, didn't I? Ah, livestock. No, maybe I didn't. Cover cropping, livestock integration, adaptive forage, grazing management, and pasture-based meat production. Oh, it's just such a horrible topic to me. But anyway, a champion of grass-fed beef, Williams helps farmers implement grazing techniques that build healthy soil for better water retention, reduced runoff, increased productivity, healthier food, and enhanced plant and wildlife biodiversity. All oh, this fancy word shit kind of is irritating, but the point's good. He, has all, he also developed many of the original techniques now adapted by the grass-fed sector. Uh, yeah, but hmm. Where I get lost is they can write anything they please about anything they choose, and the most of what we read or the most of what's available to us for information promotes all the shit that's really bad and makes the person that's telling the truth look like a complete dolt that doesn't have any uh, any reason to speak other than they like their voice like me but on the other hand for the you know for the dolts out there in the in in the real world that are all like, impressed by the phd and i've got a degree in all this now, these are the people they claim they listen to unless those people tell them what they don't want to hear and then all of a sudden well, yeah, they might have a Ph.D., but this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, based on what? My opinion. See, it's how that shit works. Oh, I don't feel I don't feel good. I don't trust this guy, blah, blah, blah. So we've got all these barriers between us and whatever the fuck the truth is about whatever the fuck is going on. And half of us don't even care. The other half don't know. Well, maybe not half. Say 45-45. And then the other 10% are making a profit off it. Hmm. And I wonder if I owned land and was a big landowner and slave owner and all that, would I give a fuck about any of this? Would any of this matter to me if I was wealthy enough to go, eh, that's not my problem, is it? We'll leave it to the grandkids to deal with someday. <laughs> anyway, back to, back to my epic tale I go. Uh, give me one second here, guys. Drink a little bit of tea. Mm. Ah, the best part of radio is that nice hot tea to cool the voice. Mm. Now, here's a depressing little link. Suicide rates soar among American farmers. The featured film touches on the hardships of farming noting unusually high suicide rates within the occupation. An article published by The Guardian in December 2018 reported that the suicide rate for farmers is more than double that of veterans. Wow. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which published the data, has since retracted the information, stating their numbers might be inaccurate as a result of coding errors. Still, it remains certain that farmer suicide is a burgeoning issue not only in the U.S., but around the world. Yeah, I'm glad they mentioned that, because you know, the U.S. isn't the only country it, there is. But it does generate a lot of shit. So hmm. whether they manufacture or, or grow food or not anymore, their dollars, you know, they got invested in their war machine kind of... Hmm. Make up for it in a sick kind of way. Back to the epic tale. The U.S. farmer suicide crisis echoes a much larger farmer suicide crisis happening globally. An Australian farmer dies by suicide every four days. Wow. In the U.K., one farmer a week takes his or her own life. In France, one farmer dies by suicide every two days. 
In India, more than 270,000 farmers have died by suicide since 1995. <clears throat> Boy, and guess who gets all that land when they kill themselves and you don't leave it to anybody? <laughs> American farmers are struggling to make a living. They are struggling to maintain equity and have a viable business that they can pass down to their children and grandchildren, says Williams. Annual operating loans keep many farmers in an endless cycle of debit. And the farm bill is largely to blame. It forces farmers to grow crops the government will ensure. This took diversity out of farming, he says. Well, you know what they say about that nasty old diversity anyway. <laughs> Data from the Chicago Federal Reserve found that 7% of farm borrowers in the Chicago Fed District, which consists of all of Iowa and most of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin, were struggling to repay operating loans that help buy seed, pay rent, and fund equipment. One of the biggest fears among farmers is that they will be the generation who failed and lost the farm, says Williams, adding that one time his own family farm, a multi-generational tradition, was at risk of collapse. Wow. Fortunately, there's a solution in regenerative, regenerative agriculture, and the best part is that farmers can start implementing practices at no cost that offer big benefits such as relieving financial burdens particularly in the form of chemical inputs and will increase productivity within the first year explains Williams so he's got a thing called cover cropping the road to regeneration the bright Kruitzes are one of the many examples of family farms that are leading the way in the transition to regenerative agriculture. Farmer's Footprint highlights the journey of how they kicked chemicals to the curb and transition from conventional farming to regenerative agriculture. Oh, I like that word better, but I don't know about the regenerative thing. Maybe I will have to get a dictionary and find out what regenerative means. <laughs> Just fucking around. Anyway, together, Grant Don and their daughter, Carly, farm their land in Redwood Falls, Minnesota. We basically went back to the way my dad's grandfather used to farm, says Carly. The family provides a clear example of how to escape the burdens of annual operating loans. Ah, so the truth comes out, man. Just too late. You know, all the, all the land's all pretty much gone. They gobbled up as much as they could, which is a lot. So what's left? We'll be fighting over it for the next 20 years. You know, until they breed that stupid uh, property ownership concept out of the children at school, like they've done with everything else. And uh, 20 years from now, a kid would own property? What are you, some kind of old person? Are you insane? <laughs> One of the first steps they took to transition to regenerative agriculture was to convert a monoculture cover crop into a highly complex and diverse cover crop. It was a game changer. Almost overnight, the family went from ha having cover crop failure to failures to cover crop success. Now, of course, this is uh, all that techie stuff cover crop i'm not even sure what that means yet maybe the link will explain it in time or we will have to look for a, an answer at a later time now let me light up here <laughs> cover crops and other regenerative practices such as no-till and pers purposeful livestock grazing help build healthy soil Planting cover crops is an important first step as the average conventional farmer is losing between three and four tons of topsoil per acre each year, notes the film. Hmm. Gail Fuller, a regenerative farmer from Kansas, hey, Miss Mary, ha ha ha, found that from 1981 to 2003, 
His farmland experienced five tons of soil erosion each year, or a loss of 145,000 tons of topsoil, according to data from the state's Natural Resources Con Conservation Service. Wow. He estimates the loss to have cost him 2.9 million dineros. The rule of thumb for cover crops is to have one bare ground, keeping the soil covered, promotes soil microorganisms such as nematodes, protozoa, and mycorrhizal fungi, <laughs> and leads to fewer inputs and more productive soils. Okay, so cover, what was that topic? Uh, cover cropping. It's got something to do with improving the topsoil so that you have healthy plants. Now that much I figured out. I'm not a farmer, so doing it, I probably don't need to know at this moment how it's done. And that sentence, oh, no, that paragraph might have explained it. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Maybe I'll just light up a big old fat one for 420. I'm a little late on that. And, uh, you know, praise uh, the, the good Lord above and all that for giving us this here shrubbery today to light on fire. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, continue i'll continue just let me get this thing done here cirque and her magic quirk she does all this fancy shit i don't <laughs> i don't do but uh anyway i thought vinnie i thought of vinnie and mary first vinnie when i read this uh the headline of this because vinnie has a little bit of knowledge with the animals and the vegetation I, at the level of working for farmers and ranchers, so I don't. I've never in my life have I ever done that for a living. Uh, but now I get to dabble in the backyard and try to grow a few vegetables with my wife now and again. But that's about it. We're we're not trying to save the world. We're not trying to cut down on our expenses. We're just trying to to do a little something uh, from the old days. And then when we have an abundance, like she had a cucumbers coming out of her ears off of three plants. It was amazing. The yield off it was incredible. And it, and it seems like everybody can use a cucumber for something, if, even if it's not food. <laughs> anyway, hmm. healthy soil equals healthy people. That's the, the next part of this. I'm going back to reading it. Give me one more second here. Healthy soil means healthy food, and that translates to healthy people. When the soil is full of life, we are full of life. This is due to a highly diverse and complex ecosystem known as the soil microbiome. I didn't know that. Did you know there are more microorganisms in a teaspoon of healthy soil than there are people on this planet? I didn't know that either. I don't know how you prove that, but that's kind of fun. That's a lot of microbes. Oh, hey, maybe they can count them. They get little name tags. <laughs> this is microbe Steve, microbe Earl, microbe Jones, many of which and their functions are not yet fully understood. But what we do know is that the human microbiome, made up of trillions of microbes such as Bacteria, fungi, and protozoa is often referred to as our second brain. <laughs> well, when we get around to using the first fucking brain we got, I'll be really impressed. As it regulates a number of important bodily processes, including digestion, immune system function, and brain function. I noticed Mary's real big on the brain lately, too. I, I was listening to her show this morning. And one more time, she was just uh, pissed off at the world for not knowing that your brain is fat. So, yeah, well, we got told so many conflicting stories growing up by so many grown-ups. So many different departments and people and this group and that group. Who do you fucking believe about anything? Hmm. Anyway. Oh. Whoop. Whoop. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, 
They, <laughs> sorry. Sorry about that, guys. That made me laugh, too. <laughs> anyway. The, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> the, the human... Take two. The human... <laughs> My microbiome and the soil and the soil microbiome function si similarly. I, I'm laughing and coughing simultaneously. I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> Bear with me. As organic farming pioneer Patrick Holden of the Sustainable Food Trust puts it, soil is essentially the stomach of the planet, he wrote in a blog in 2015. The layer of healthy topsoil, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> thriving with microorganisms, which covers much of the land surface, is in effect a vast digestive system, the collective stomach of all plants, breaking down soil nutrients into bioavailable forms that plants can absorb. Hmm. The rhizosphere, rhizosphere, hmm, or root ball, is the gut of the plant and the zone where plant roots and soil organisms interact in a way variety of, in a whole variety of biotic, symbiotic, and pathogenic relationships to enable these organisms to do their work. Okay. Without the presence of microorganisms, the mechanics of the digestive system can still function to a certain degree, purging our intestines of microorganisms through antibiotic use will not stop us from digesting food just as bypassing the soil ecosystem through using chemical fertilizers or hypo hydroponics will still stimulate plant growth. However, the long-term vitality and health of plants, animals, and people is centrally dependent on the presence and diversity of microorganisms in the soil and gut, respectively. Well, sorry about the coughing attack, but... Uh, hmm. Well, that seemed a little bit easier to understand than the previous stuff for me. Don't know why. Some things just fly over my head and some things that go, boom, and I get them. I don't know why. It must be my horrible upright, uh, upbringing as a child. But now we're going to get to the good stuff and start reading about glyphosate and GMOs. They call this the smoking gun. So here we go. The featured film introduces Bush, who left behind a career of treating patients in clinics to go into the field and provide education and raise awareness about our de degenerative food and farming system, which he says is the root cause of soaring rates of cancer and chronic disease in the U.S. <clears throat> Between 1996 and two. 2007, there was a complete reversal of the U.S. cancer map, says Bush. To see an entire population respond in a single decade to a sudden explosion of cancer suggests that we did something similar to Chernobyl, that some massive environmental injury is likely to have led to this explosive rise in cancer, he says. Upon taking a closer look, Bush and his team identified the introduction of Monsanto's Roundup weed killer on food crops as the event that may have triggered the rise in cancer rates. He first compared the glyphosate spraying maps to the cancer death maps, but they didn't superimpose. However, once he added in the tributaries of the Mississippi River, and saw that up to 85% of all the glyphosate sprayed in the U.S. was draining into a single water system. A light bulb went off. Okay, I can't do a sound of a light bulb going off. You have to figure that one out yourself. If this is the most 
prevalent antibiotic in our environment that's disseminating the microbiome in our soil, then maybe we had a smoking gun. Maybe this is the event that really transformed public health, he says. Transform public health. Interesting. I don't personally know a lot of people that are all sick. I know a few people on the internet that aren't well. But nose to nose, not, not around here. So I wonder. Anyhow, so uh, now it says glyphosate and the destruction of the farm. It was... It was until 1996 when genetically modified crops were first introduced that glyphosate became a commodity in agriculture. Prior to that, the weed killer was used by farmers and homeowners alike, but much more sparingly due to the fact that it kills everything it touches. Things changed with the release of Roundup Ready crops, which led to the use of glyphosate as a crop treatment says Bush. Since then, glyphosate use has ridden almost 15-fold according to Detox Project. Enough glyphosate was applied in 2014 to spray over three-quarters of a pond of glyphosate active ingredient on every harvested acre of cropland in the U.S. and remarkably, almost one-half pound per acre on all cropland worldwide. Hmm. Aren't you feeling better already, everybody? I sure know I am. The more chemicals that are used, the more degraded our soil becomes. This is bad news for farmers. The, in, the inability to produce healthy food that also brings a profit is putting immense pressure on our nation's farmers, according to Bush. <coughs> We're looking at the end of this family farm tradition as they collapse. We open ourselves up to vulnerability because it's these multinational organizations that move in with money from China, South America, or Russia. They're coming in to buy up massive swaths of the most fertile areas and they're owning their and they're owning our own land which means it's no longer owned by Americans, let alone the farmers themselves. And I don't buy any of that crap, because if you got to pay property tax, what, the Chinese aren't going to have to pay property tax? I don't think so. What, are foreigners exempt from uh, property tax for some reason? I've never heard of it. I've never heard of a government that won't charge you a tax to ask them what the tax is for. So, hmm. I'm not so easily uh, manipulated with this Chinese takeover and this country's yen yuan boohoo bullshit story. It's all the same. The same people do the same freaking thing over and over and over. And we sit here like a bunch of nimrods thinking it's different. Hmm. I don't get I can't figure it out. I must be slower than you out there in the world. <laughs> ignoring, ignoring all this good stuff we talk about on the chat rooms. It makes absolutely no sense from any stance of homeland security or national safety. And if we look at this ever-expanding dependence and machine, and, and machine of mega farming scale, we become very prone to catastrophic failures of the delivery system, which is probably the goal from the start. I don't know how many times I've harped on Anything this big cannot be managed without people stealing from it. The design of it is to steal from The whole point of this thing is so that you can steal from it. You just have to uh, stand back and take a good look and try to figure out if you weren't trying to steal from this, why was it designed this way in the first place? So, because, uh, you know, average Joe likes to complain about, oh, look at the mistakes they made. Oh, these lousy Democrats. Oh, these lousy Republicans. Look at what they've done to us this time. When, no, that that was the plan. You're, you're just butthurt because you think voting has got something to do with the actual uh, application of law on the public. It has nothing to do with it. It's all corporate. 
If you understand what the word lobbying means, hmm, hmm, hmm. well, children, what is lobbying, children? <laughs> See, lobbying is bribing the freaking guy sitting in the chair to, uh, yeah, I simmer down there, Flash. Yeah, I just, uh, weird hit, man, and I'm alone today, so I wasn't expecting it. My new machine has a, has a uh, what do you call it, uh, a mute switch, but there's no light, so I was trying not to fuck with that too much, and that didn't work out for me. I'll get back to my story in a minute. I felt like pontificating on a topic or two just for a minute and read a little chat, take a break. But, wow, boy, are we screwed. I mean, is it just me that wakes up in the morning? And when I see the Internet, it, the Internet reminds me of how fucked we are as a group. Now, maybe not as individuals. You know, individually, shit. That's Life is life. Some people want to be slapped around with a new belt. You know what I mean? Other people don't want to be slapped at all. Some people, everybody wants what they fucking want. They all want something different. So, that is how we got where we are now. Is by being taught that everybody's wrong except you. You know the answer. You're the smart one. Everybody else is stupid. Don't listen to them. They don't know anything. Well, Grimner says he'd rather have a Chinese takeout than Chinese takeover. Oh, but like I was trying to say, um, it doesn't matter. If you pay off your mortgage, you still got to pay property tax. So who cares if the Chinese own the freaking land or not? If you're renting from them, that's your problem, not theirs. You know, if you want to get rid of somebody, don't rent their fucking apartments or their building or whatever. And they'll have to shut it down and go somewhere else. But that's people don't do that anymore. They don't control the uh, the guy with the money. The money guy controls them with the product. We've been taken hostage, and there's probably in our lifetime we'll not see anything good come of any of the, uh, anything. It's just going to get progressively worse, or at least the stories will always be bad. What the truth is, who knows what the fucking truth is. But as long as they tell us, 38% of the world's been covered in glyphosate, you're all going to fucking die, 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 die. Then you know what? People are going to think. They're going to think that. <laughs> now, I wonder what the reactions, individual reactions to these kind of things. Don't make two bits. You know, that's nothing. But when you start grouping up, uh-oh. I need a, a 30 second. I got to let my dog, I got to go open up the door, let this dog out to pee. I'll be back. 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd done. See, I'm not following through with my things today. Getting behind on my responsibilities and lock the dog in the house with me. And the sun seems to have come out since I started the show. <laughs> All gloomy, Gus, most of the day. Clouds in the sky, and then I start doing a dork table, and guess what comes out? The sun to torture me. Now, it, actually, I'm just kidding, because it'll be, it'll be out until about 9.30 or 10 o'clock tonight, I think. And then through the summertime, we get a couple of months where it's, it's up there 11, uh, 12 o'clock at night. Oh, and then sun comes up about four o'clock in the morning. So, for a it's a weird period. It's hard to uh, define if you've never lived through it. But mm, twenty hours of daylight can get as uh, as uncomfortable as twenty hours of darkness. So, luckily, it's balanced up here, and you know they have that thing. Summertime is one way; winter time is another. So they sell this place to the Russians and they stop it from working however it works now. So I'm going to get back to my story. Yeah, I had a little cough in uh, exchange with my microphone. Got me a new microphone too. This thing is like, it's a gamer microphone. So I think they, they designed this to be thrown across the room at other things and not break. Because gamers are kind of nasty you know, when they lose. So the, yeah, the materials, it's kind of nice. Anyway. I don't know if the quality of my wonderful voice is getting out there in the 
radio world any better or not, but the equipment's fun. And I'm having a good time with it so far. So, let's get back to my epic tale about dirt. It takes a mega industry to screw up that big. See? Ah, even these people think that. Bush points to the 12 million pounds of beef that were recalled in 2018 due to Somala, uh, salmonella contamination. Salmonella. Oh, yes. Food poisoning. These invasive bacteria are a symptom of the collapse of the greater microbiome in cows says Bush, adding, it takes a mega industry to screw up that big, to make us that vulnerable. As the scale grows of the farm, we should not be deluded that it means safety. It means danger. It means an extreme dependence on an extremely tenuous situation. The good news is that through regenerative agriculture, which is growing in popularity, We can turn all of this around. Farmers have an uh, opportunity to overcome the fear, transform their soils, and reclaim their right to grow healthy food, says Bush. But I bet they won't make near as much freaking money. See, there is the catch, right? Hmm. What do you want to do? Do you want to be a good fellow to your fellow man and survive? Or do you want to be filthy rich and fuck these idiots in the ear? See, because the reality is not, oh man, we're, we got a long way to go. Anyway, where was I? Nobody knows better than a good farmer that we are simply the tip of the iceberg of biology when it comes to life on this planet, he says. A farmer knows that their cattle, their livestock, and their plants have an interdependence that stems deep within the soil, and that's Vinny's tried to explain that so many times about the government was using the tortoise as a weapon against the, the rancher when it was actually because he was putting the cows where they were, it was giving the, the turtle something to eat because that's what they live on. But the government has this way of just lying to people and leaving out really important things so they can get away with their snaky shit and fuck everybody equally. Because that's what equal is, by the way. I I found a new definition for equal. Equal is defined as who is dominant now. Yeah, we're equal because I'm in charge and you're not. (laughs) Anyway. (sighs) Trying to be a funny guy on this dark table by myself is not as easy as it was with Miss Mary. Now, let's see, where did I leave off here? Um, it is for this reason that farmers hold the key to restoring public health and eliminating our epidemic of cancer and chronic disease. If we destroy our soils, then we destroy ourselves. Bush said it best in a recent post on his Fake book page. Regenerative agriculture is not just a soil issue. It is a human health issue. With the loss of our soil ecosystems, our food lacks nutrients that our bodies need for healthy function. Every consumer, family, farm, and business needs to reorient priorities to consider the soil first. It's our health that is at stake. Well, okay, that was a little dramatic, but I guess that's the truth of the whole damn thing in the long run, isn't it? You know, if, you know, it's like a car. If you don't put the right gas in the right engine, that car ain't going to run right. And then what proves that? They got those diesel engines. Try running regular gas in a diesel. Uh, or, or vice versa. You're not going anywhere. You know, but it does create the illusion of choice. You know, that way you can you can fuck yourself up with this, or look over here, you can fuck yourself up with that. Either way, you ain't going to win. But, hmm, see, traveling around, I've done it. So, it's easy to say that when you've done something, and can look back on, on, and see the results of what it all was. Hmm. 
the usage of all the things, you know, my little contribution in, in 59 years, uh, burning gas and burning this and burning that and burning weed and burning tobacco, whatever I'm burning, my little contribution that hasn't seemed to tip the scale one way or the other, whether I participate in it or whether I don't participate in it. So it's not a singular individual kind of thing. I, this is the kind of stuff that requires groups. And that's what we don't have anymore. We've got groups of uh, people that don't want to be happy with what they are. They want to be something else. they got plenty of that. Oh, I'm a toaster trapped in a man's body. I need to escape. Help, help. You know, and then they give you some medicine and you start talking to your cat and all that shit and everything's good. But, huh. you know, for a real change, like, hey, why don't they deliver the electricity on a, on a cycle that doesn't cause waste? I don't think a question like that would get an answer. I think people would just pretty much wash over it like it didn't exist. You know, ignore it. Change the subject. You know, how about those Chicago Bears, baby? <laughs> they, you know, uh, sports. What else we got? Celebrity, politics, even the politicians. Just a bunch of bullshit. And the reason I think that the most is, remember that wiener guy? Boy, he was a freaking nightmare, and he's doing all this perverted shit on the internet or something, and he's got a girlfriend in South America. If I've got the right politician, I might have the wrong guy. But I guess the point I'm trying to make about it is it's not unusual, it's not different, it's not shocking for us to hear that our representatives in power, you know, in seats of decision are, you know, off in a corner fucking a cat somewhere. And they got caught, and the guy's going to go to prison for animal cruelty, but he'll be back in 22 months. Just hang on. And they get followings, and people follow them. They're still financially comfortable when they return from, you know, paying their debt to society for their crime, whatever that was. And I don't really see how all this stuff really makes any sense to the public. It's just um, a lot of bar drama. Oh, the, the Russians were colluding with Trump to take the White House away from Hillary. Or some shit like that. I don't even fucking really get it all. Spies. Right. In, in politics. Well, there's a surprise for you. I mean, crying out fucking loud. How many James Bond movies did they make? And what were those about? Spies working for the government. Only James Bond was a good spy. He was not a bad spy. Because bad spies, well, what would a bad spy do? Hmm. Would a bad spy expose your, your government as a the fraud it truly is instead of this beautiful, wonderful, look at this, everything's so spiffy and great, and it's not, it's a lot of shit, hmm. I was really disappointed when I saw people living in uh, intense cities in America, I mean, there you go, That that's your indicator right there that you failed, your society, that's the whole point of society, is so that f people can live inside with plumbing and electricity and television and, you know, send their kids to school and whatever and here what's normal today is for people to be living outside and they're allocated millions of dollars to remove the trash that these you know human wastes leave in their wake because they're on foot with no money so what do you expect them to do and then uh you know the system well we'll we'll put this money over here so well, we can have the trash hauled out but it never happens because some other crook stole the money to do something else and got a hold of it first. I don't, I don't believe they don't want this uh, homelessness and welfare. I think it's all without it. Then you'd have really big problems because, fuck, if people were hmm, not confined in these little fucking financial cages and only allowed to get so far in life by the state, which is all it is, then uh, there you go. You wouldn't live in a in a tent outside on a freaking street somewhere. That's I don't believe that's a choice that you make on your own. I believe it's a choice that the system creates for you to make. Because without them, 
you're better off in the long run or these people wouldn't do what they're doing. But for them to sleep outside and, you know, use the streets for a toilet and all this and trash piles, that's just strange. I don't really get why would that wouldn't be controlled. I don't understand how any amount of money would be so much to anybody that they couldn't see, hey, we got to do something serious about this. But they don't. What they do is uh, <laughs> they print the money, they sell it to you with a debt attached to it, and then they watch you sink. And it's that it's that fucking simple. It's not real complicated. Uh, and the way they do that, it's all by design because Cirque has the same situation here as the Americans have. But, you know, rope, barbed wire. Because that, I don't think the Danes... Being so un, you know such a small population, they can't afford to fuck as many people as uh, America can. America's got people to fuck over and over and over again. What is it? Uh, how many people are in prison still for pot? <laughs> One state has a pot law, the other state doesn't. This state has a cannabis, you know, a medical cannabis, or whatever. They've broken this shit down in the. Because it's legal. See, there we go. It's legal now, people. So it's no different than when it was illegal. It's just now when they stop you and ask you how much you're carrying, you can be punished for having too much. See how different that is. Because before, when it wasn't legal and you had some, well, if they didn't take it from you, they're going to take you to jail for having it, no matter how much it was. So what changed? Oh, well, now they don't, uh, well, now we've got, uh, I think there's a lot, just as many people are using the black market to score their dope as there's ever been, except for heroin, because you can't get anything unless you know somebody in the military that brings it here. <laughs> Not any of the good stuff. Hmm. Or if you're tight with your doctor and your pill head and you can get you some downers, uh, shit like that still, God. They got all these stories on the internet. Well, uh, the stories don't match the reality that I've seen. I've seen a lot of people, uh, I guess, in text anyway, on internet chat sites, explaining their side of you know their physical malady that they have as a result of living through this 21st century thing we're, we're dealing with now. And it strikes me like there's... Uh, hmm, the illness level seems to be a, a matter of if you're in a real populated place, the people in a real populated place are more ill than the people that aren't. Like, I don't know, Mary's my age. I think Mary's a little older than me. Ha, ha, ha. And uh, Mary can work me out. I mean, she's always on the go, 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 go. Me, I'm a lazy. I sit on my butt as much as possible. I've done my day, you know. Now I'm older and I want to relax a little. Miss Mary, no, no, no. She's one of those. She likes to be active and busy and get things done. And I just like to sit around and tell other people to do it. I'm going to be a great dictator someday, but not today. Hmm. Well, anyway, back to my epic story. But this is the, you know, the reality of uh, biotech and chemicals and all this brilliant government agencies all working hand in hand together to give us the result these people are exposing to you and a lot of folk don't they don't put the, the they don't put the things in line and understand that none of this is by chance it's all planned they know what they're going to get when they apply a when you apply a poison to something you know what's going to happen. It's going to kill whatever you're attacking. Well, they're attacking us. And um, here we go. We've got written proof that there are you know, people in the uh, academic world who also agree with this. You know, uh, you're just a conspiracy nut. You're against the government. Blah, bullshit. That's got nothing to fucking do with it. What's got to do with it is every time I read something horrible about what's going on in the world... There just always seems to be a government name attached to the answer of who's doing what to who and why. And why is, wow, boy, if they could just tell us. Oh, I heard somebody telling me about the Georgia um, Guidestones or some kind of stones. They got 
this big thing written in 50 freaking languages, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. When did that surface? Is you know when did, How long has it been there for? Who put it there? But no, it's see, it's the message. The one time a message gets through is the time that people don't want to research who sent the message, and then the times that the message doesn't get through seems to be when the only fucking concern anybody has is who is this guy? Where does he get opinions like that? Does he have a PhD? Blah 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 blah. blah. On and on and on and on. So the more uh, the more something is justified and sustained in in public society, the less I truly believe it. I start to wonder. You know, there there there's some of it sounds believable, and some of it sounds too. Uh, how can it be that coincidental? <laughs> Glyphosate, people. And if you do a little reading. You can do the background and read how uh, Monsanto did these terrible things to farmers with their seeds. And uh, not manipulating the winds, or but using the, the atmosphere and, and life as a way to get their thing done. So should a, a wind gust some of their seed off the one farm to another farm, and the second farm says, hey, you guys, your shit blew into my fields and ruined our, all our shit. And they say, well, yeah, but we own that shit, so you have to go. And the courts worked with them, and believe it or not, guess who Monsanto would end up owning the freaking land they fucked up. So this is huge, and it's deeper, and all this deep state crap, that's, nah, that's just a way to explain we're all a bunch of sheep and nobody knows what the fuck is going on. We just believe the media. <laughs> There's your deep state. The person that believes in that, to me, not to you, but to me. Oh, the deep state is going to do this. and No, they're going to do that any freaking way. The front man to that lousy rock and roll band called the USA, old Donald Frump. He's no different than old fucking Obama was, or Bush, or Clinton, or anybody else that ever sat there. This guy is, you're going to be so surprised when you see uh, years from now, like with Bush, you know, we've got all these years now to look back at the fucked up shit Bush did while he was in, in that White House. And then now we're dealing with, oh, look at all the fucked up shit Obama did Well, while, while Trump's doing this fucked up shit. But we're looking at the, you know, the previous occupants of the seat. So, well, hey, but look at all the good Trump's doing. Yeah, that's exactly what they said about Bush and Obama. Look at all the good these guys do. It kind of, well, put their personalities aside. You don't have to be a racist, you nasty man. And I would try to tell people it's got nothing to do with freaking race. I, I don't like him. He's he's full of shit. Oh, but he speaks so well. And, wow, crying out loud. He can read a freaking script. Ooh, there's a reason to believe somebody. They read the script well. Some of the most honest people I've ever listened to were like myself. They didn't speak clearly and concisely, but they made a fucking point, you know? And sometimes the truth, uh, <laughs> the truth needs to be laughed at, laughed with, or laughed about. You know, because we can't just sit around sniveling about it. Oh, but wow, I'm crying all the time. That ain't going to change nothing. But knowing an answer, that, well, that might be a doorway to, to knowing something. I don't think it really does any good. Because I've got a lot of knowledge about a lot of things. But they're, I can't apply them to shit because they don't physically exist in my life. You know? Uh, <laughs> How do you how, Where do you go with that one? Uh, well, like the the things I've picked up from Hal Anthony over the years, listening to from behind the woodshed, right? He's makes sense. And the bottom I got out of this is my clear estimation of all of it. Legal starts with administrative. So if you know how to do the administrative paperwork, you can cut the cord off at the beginning and not ever have to deal with them. But there's protocols and there's rules and there's this and there's that and it's a big game so but just like any other game if you know how the game is played 
you have a little experience and you know what the fucking rules are, you might even be able to win once in a while. Uh, me and Vinny don't don't think that you can win going to court. Me and Vinny believe that going to court is the end. That's that's when you're finished. But some people think that there's a way to beat them in their own game in their own court, and I I don't think so. They'll just not hear the evidence or something. Some control mechanism from you know the the bench will come down and slap you, and all the peons that bow to the judge will go okay. Because what are they going to do? They're either going to lock you up or they're going to fine you. Those are the goals of a court. You, they have you already. So now, what? how much money can we take from them? And I'm going to finish off with the, that story that I was reading. I'm gonna, if you want to continue with it. Because uh, that particular comment I just used brings us to the next link that caught my attention today. Now I want to go right into this. And it's kind of funny. I'm going to post it first. I'm going to give my hardcore four out there in RLM an opportunity to peek at the wares before I read them. Huh? Huh? How's that for service, huh? Uh, yeah, you thought 20% off was cool. Wait until you see what you get at the dork table for absolutely free. Yeah. Life is a physical malady, says Grimner. And Frump just laughed. He didn't add to it. Frump's a pretty funny guy. I was kind of hoping you'd say something there, mister. Anyway, this beauty is entitled, Are You a Petty Criminal? Qu Canada Just Stop Prosecuting Minor Crimes. So, I, now again, I don't know how true all these links are. I only know, proof to me is I like that story. It makes sense. I believe it. So this is coming under the, hey, this story makes sense and I believe it. So <clears throat> here we go. Thanks to a crumbling justice system, which has forced courts prioritize, oh, it should say has forced courts to prioritize crimes by seriousness, Canadian prosecutors are now letting petty criminals walk free for crimes such as shoplifting, minor assault, and fraud, according to the CBC. The president of Canadian Association of Crown Counsel says cases involving less serious crimes are either being dropped outright or shunted into restorative justice programs. He called it a regular occurrence, though specific numbers weren't available. <clears throat> At some point, we have to make a decision. What crimes do you want us not to prosecute, said Rick Woodburn, whose organization represents 7,500 crowns across the country, CBC. I know what crowns across the country is supposed to be, but... I guess that must be like the uh, the judges, Crown Council. Yeah, judges. Let's call it that. Uh, I bet you old uh, Frumpy would know. So, uh, but I'm not in chat right now, so we'll just let that go. But as uh, it's going on here, <clears throat> and as you can see, it starts falling off the bottom. And sooner or later, we're going to decriminalize because we're not prosecuting certain types of offenses, said Woodburn. Due to a 2016 Canadian Supreme Court ruling known as the Jordan Decision, which protects defender, offenders from unreasonable delays through the legal system, prosecutors are now focusing on major crimes such as homicides and sexual assaults. In July, yeah, this is old too. And in July 20 and 16, the CSC overturned the drug convictions of Barrett Richard Jordan due to an, an unreasonable delay. Now, if a case is delayed by 18 months in provincial court or 30 months in superior court, it's considered unreasonable. Lower end charges are being triaged and falling off our radar because we have to keep an eye on the bigger cases of the homicides, sexual assaults, and ro robberies, said Woodburn. 
adding that the courts have now adopted a triage system to manage cases by a seriousness of the alleged offense. When we look at our schedules, we have to make sure they're falling within the Jordan timelines and that court time is not getting eaten up by a fraud under $200. Ah, see, they, can, they can't make no money. They can't survive off the small criminal. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, look at how many of those they got. But hey, they want those big, you know, the big murderer and killer ones. I'm starting to see a pattern forming here right before my eyes. Back to my epic tale. Retailers are obviously very concerned. The Retail Council of Canada, which represents over 45,000 retail merchants across the country, has expressed grave concerns over recent developments. It's really concerning for retailers. <laughs> Retailers of all sizes, said the council's Atlantic director, Jim Cormier. The deterrent for theft and shoplifting in stores is, of course, often that there can be legal consequences. Last year, the retail council estimated that shoplifting accounts for up to $5 billion a year in losses for Canadian retail. Wow. Five billion a year just in... I thought the cops and the freaking politicians were doing all right. But hey, maybe there's a future in shoplifting in Canada. Uh, Cormier said shoplifting has an awful impact on retailers. And if it happens enough, it will cut into a company's profits. If it happens enough? Yeah, that's it. Uh, wow. If it happens at all, who do you think pays for it? Less profits means less ability to hire and pay staff. You know it means less tax revenue for the cities and towns in which these retails, retailers are doing their business, said Cormier. Stephen O'Keefe, a consultant who helps companies with loss prevention, said it pains him when courts throw out shoplifting cases. <laughs> when you have a company that experiences shrinkage in excess of their net profit, they have to shut their doors. We've experienced that in Canada over past years, where we've had major brands, major retailers, who have closed their doors because they can't absorb those shrinking charges. Okay. In order to recoup their losses, some retailers are skipping criminal court completely, instead opting to take offenders to civil court, according to O'Keefe. Woodbourne insists that provincial governments as well as the federal government need to set aside more money and resources for the criminal justice system, including more crowns, judges, court staff, and defense attorneys. Unless this happens, more delays and drop cases are inevitable. Judges and justices are working themselves into the ground. Crowns are drowning in workload. Defense lawyers are the same, said Woodburn. Oh, you. Hmm. You see them overworked. Staff and others are working overtime just to make sure people's rights are not being infringed. And that, as it is now, is un sustainable. Well, that was kind of bizarre. <laughs> anyway, that if you're going to make shoplifting a crime, go north. Don't go south. Go north. Canada. Okay? Now, on the on the, the east coast, there's a little place of it. They speak a lot of French. Stay the fuck out of that place. Don't go there. <laughs> go to the other side, the west part, and stay close to the U.S. where it's not too damn cold. But that's just my opinion. I'm a world traveler now. I can say stuff like that if I want to. Anyway, show, so now, <laughs> boy, I can't wait for the Americans to get a hold of concepts like that, you know, because the Admiralty Court's not making enough money off these uh, small shoplifting cases. So let's just, uh, hey, let's throw them out of court. And then they got civil court. Now, civil court. I guess civil court must be separate from admiralty court. How does that work? Anybody out there in the Brainiac department know that? I'm not well read on that particular about these. Maybe Vinny would have known. I wish Vinny would have been here today for that. Because he knows his legal beagle shit. And if he done, he knows how to find out. The 
you know, the prince of fucking research, old Vincent. And I got to give him credit, though. I mean, you know, he knows what he's talking about when he's talking about something that we understand. And when he's making stuff up and having a having a laugh, eh, I try not to take that all too serious. Let it worry me. I can't judge his mental health off what he writes. That would be, <laughs> that would give him a strike right out the, wow, that'd probably give him three strikes. So, now we're going to continue on with the Dork Table podcast today. And <laughs> sustainably unsustainable. Hmm. I don't know what, I don't know if there's one thing, you can't say, though, there's one thing that if we fixed one thing, everything else would be fine. And I think I found the answer to that dilemma. But it doesn't catch on. And I bring it up regularly, I know, I know, probably far, far too often. But I just got this sneaking suspicion that if we weren't always lying or doing something that's connected to a lie that's not changeable. You know, like when I use the internet, it's not the internet that's my problem. It's not the Wi-Fi that's my problem. I got an Ethernet cable for that. So I got a direct connect. Uh, it's not, um, what else? It's not the content. The, I can turn things on and off as I please, read what I like, uh, not read it if I don't like. So... I started to, to really get into what Larry was talking about, and I'm convinced that it's the delivery. Yes, people, the delivery of the service is our problem. So take that idea, the delivery of the service is my problem, and then compare it to other things that you get delivered to you as a service. And some things are delivered... Um, less obviously as a, a shitty deal as others like oh but look we have this wonderful electricity and look at all this special wonderful stuff it does and it serves such a great purpose it makes life so much easier and it does i have no argument with that what i have an argument with is it took somebody i was in my 50s somebody else had to bring it to my attention it was never put on the table before that and explained, hey, they're delivering it to you so that the service that you get will produce a waste so that the results that you have from using it will be what they are. And that's as simplified as I can put it. Maybe it's so simple it doesn't make any sense to other people. I haven't quite got my, you know, figured that one out. I don't, I don't speak to a lot of people in private about these topics. Most of the stuff is... Uh, it, it's just my opinion about what I've learned, read, seen over a lifetime. I very, very rarely do I put my opinion, except for when I'm reading a link. When I'm reading a link, that's somebody else's information, and I let you guys know, hey, I found it, it looks interesting, it may be true, it may be a bunch of shit. That's up to you to decide, you know. It's not, I'm not promoting anything in life except for... The truth, if what whatever that means to people, it can't be that individual either. There has to be a, a better way to describe what is good for all of us, because that that just saying that out loud makes a lot of people start talking all that stupid commie shit. Oh, you're a communist, and no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, and I've heard the accusation. I wasn't just being weird. Uh, what I'm trying to point out is that there is a common something that is good for all. And when they start putting shit into the stuff that's good for all, you know, to to pretend to deliver it better to you, and the end result is the same bullshit that they're trying to tell you they're trying to prevent, but you get it anyway, then you have to start looking into the laws to see how th how this is possible. And the way it's possible, the only way I can understand any of this is possible, is they tell you one thing, they but in the background there's something else, ab absolutely the opposite going on. And oh, of course, since Trump come along, oh, Trump's the great savior and he's going to take on the... No, Trump is somebody's monkey and he's saying what he's told to say to get these results so that the population will believe there's a president doing something when he ain't doing fucking shit. You got a wall? <laughs> 
<laughs> Can you fly domestically without a special ID? Uh, hmm. Can you buy an avocado from Mexico <laughs> without having to mortgage your car? <laughs> so, you know, little things like that. And like they were saying in the beginning of the show about the Chinese are buying up all this property. And I just don't think that the government gives a shit. Who buys the property? They care who the pays the taxes on the property. Because whoever buys the property never fucking owns the property. It's always owned by the state that the property belongs to. There you go. That's what property taxes are for. It's like in the old days uh, when they had the, what was that? Some kind of church, the Catholics or whatever church it is out there in Italy. And, it, and they were saying, uh, in the, or what I was reading about was, they had this, uh, the members of their clergy were, uh, they were not supposed to reproduce. So they took oaths of abstinence from sex. And people assumed that was, oh, so they'll live a pure life. And No, it was so that they'll settle for banging little boys and not make an heir to leave their freaking land to so the church loses control of the land. And people, you know, would... The, <laughs> They're so gullible, you know, if somebody in a robe or a suit and tie tells them a story, they usually buy it. I don't know why, what the magic is of that magic tie. Or Have you guys ever seen what these religious idiots wear when they do their ceremonies? <laughs> and then they tell you, don't, don't participate in ceremonies and rituals. And then what do you watch? You watch a society full of fucking people in suits and robes and shit doing rituals. They, how do you know what ritual they're doing? Just because they tell you what it's called doesn't mean that's what it's called. They're probably doing the Aleister Crowley freaking baby stomp. <laughs> we don't know it because that's not what they're reporting. <laughs> I, I think that could catch on. The Aleister Crowley will replace abortion with the Aleister Crowley fucking baby stomp. Yeah, just wait till the fucking kid's born and just stomp the fucker to death. I'm not going to remember it anyway. Besides that, everybody dies. Give them a chance to live and then fucking kill them. You know, I mean, where did, to me, all this stuff is just so insane. I grew up with a whole nother uh, outlook on reproduction and life. And my wife was teasing me the other day because when one of my plants has it like leaves or something, then the roots not delivering the water, enough water to make the leaf green or I'm doing it wrong, whatever. I have this real problem cutting the uh, things down. <laughs> I want to pick and choose, and oh, you look okay. No, that's not how you do it. If you got something that's growing badly, you got to remove it, stop it from growing, so it can get an opportunity to, to get healthy and grow good. But hmm. we're all limited with our own little prejudices about this and that and the other. Luckily, it's just plants. I mean, I'm not that concerned about people. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I guess I care. The other night, Sir smacked her foot in into a chair. Barefoot. See, I'm not one of these barefoot people like you and Grim. It's Moose and uh, Moose. <laughs> Cirque and Grim. I was thinking of Dork, uh, Dork, uh, Freaker's Ball and <laughs> added her to you. But I know Grim's always saying, eh, I don't like shoes. Hmm. Well, me, I don't care for them much myself. But, you know, like some people look at a gun, I look at a pair of shoes as a form of protection for my dainty little toes so that I don't smack them into furniture and shit like that and break them. Because I, too, I hate to admit this on the radio, but I, too, am of the clumsy persuasion. I don't do it often, but uh, every once in a blue moon, I'll have me a little mishap and do something stupid I could have avoided had I paid more attention, but I must have been in a hurry when I did that. <laughs> I guess my little link about Canada didn't go over very well with the RLM crowd. <laughs> my hardcore four on this Saturday. It's a nice Saturday out here in Denmark. I hope you guys are enjoying a, a nice Saturday if you're inside stuck on and this is it you got radio to entertain your little mind with uh i've been stuck inside i know how that is 
And if you got the opportunity to get the hell out and go enjoy yourself, well, you know what? Lucky on you. Don't let nobody say it isn't good. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I've got some stuff I wrote down for topics. And uh, something that crossed my mind earlier today was, did it ever occur to anybody else how bad shit creates a market to sell good shit? And where that come from is the glyphosate story. It seems like you've got to make something so horribly bad that it's beyond using before the population will demand a replacement. And then your replacement costs twice as much as the crap that wasn't working. So you've got now you've got your your market. It's already set up. They're disappointed with the shitty stuff. Now they're prepared. And money's not even an interest anymore. I'll pay you. Just get me something that doesn't taste like dirty socks. <laughs> Whatever that would taste like. I was trying to be funny. And uh, so I noticed that that pattern of something isn't working. And then all of a sudden, here we come to save the day with history. You know, well, they used to do it like this in the day. And uh, we'll try that again because, well, apparently this experiment didn't work. <laughs> and, well, I mean, that's the simple part of it. You know, glyphosate was a dis just a disgrace. Just goes to show that these lying, thieving pricks and seats of decision don't give a fuck about you. They do untested shit on us all the fucking time. This 5G thing coming up, that's just the icing on the cake. That just goes to prove that public opinion means squat. But spending your dollars matters. But see how many of us are so tied into this electronic game that without it, we won't be able to function in the world anymore. Which for me might be the goal. You know, I don't mind if they drop, if the internet disappears, I'll find other shit to occupy my time with. But while I have the internet to use, I'm going to keep trying to let people know that there is an answer to what's you know wrong but the people in seats of decision don't want to know it you cannot the reason with them you cannot speak to them you cannot talk to them but you can fucking bribe them that's the only language politics understands is the freaking dollar bill if you support my campaign, I'll support your poison. Fuck these idiots. I want me a career in politics, baby. I want to ride in the limousine. And, you know, have me a little girlfriend on the side. Don't tell my wife. She won't she won't know. But there's that's the that's the end result of what I've seen of politics. Lying, stealing, murdering, fucking thieves that everybody wants to be. <laughs> I don't I don't want to be anything like them. Icing on the cake. That's right. We have ice. We have cake. Some people don't even have cake. And then once upon a time in life, you know what? Cake was bread. I don't know where, where, who invented cake. <laughs> Must have been after the Antoinette days. You know, because old Marie said, let them eat cake. and But she was talking about bread. When her people were starving and... There was unrest in France, and the people just said, hey, we've had enough of you fuckers, and that's what we don't have anymore. That's probably what we'll never have again, an uprising of common man against the sitting government and an overthrow. No, now we've got too many uh, military powers. You start fucking around with shit like that, you will die in minutes, minutes, Look, well, maybe months. Look what they did to Gaddafi, and what did the poor guy do? I'm going to trade in gold instead of petrodollars. Fuck you people. Oh, and by the way, I hate Israel. Israel is my enemy. And look, Israel's still there. The petrodollars still there. And guess who's gone? Gaddafi. So, hmm, what is the lesson that, that people learned from that? Well, when you fuck with America, we'll kill you. When you can't take care of your own people any better than that. And, you know, the country that's got the fucking... <laughs> Tent cities is the one judging all these countries that don't and calling them names and bad guys and this and that. And I'm sure Gaddafi had his moments. He was a fucking dictator and whatnot. But the way I look at it, 
It ain't my business what kind of government they have in Germany. I don't live in fucking Germany. I can talk about it, and I can judge it, and I can do all kinds of shit. But I don't have to endure it unless I choose to. You know, I didn't marry a German. <laughs> but I know there's people that wish they could. Hmm. Rob works, needs a new yacht. Okay, Rob, you know what? I say to you, apply to Bill Gates. Tell him that you want a, a, a grant that you're going to make a, a death ray that's going to kill 50 million people. And you only need $12 million to manufacture it, but you, you, you broke. But I can produce one, give me 10 years and $12 million to work with, and I'll have one functioning for you on the table. And that gives you 10 million, oh, 10 million, that gives you 10 years to spend $12 million. Bet you can't do it. <laughs> that's, my, that's my funniest joke, too. I go to the freaking rich people and beg them for money so that you can make a death ray to destroy everybody else. And I think you'll get funding if you try that. That's what I believe. I haven't tried it yet. Might think about it someday now. Let's see. I'll talk it over with my wife. <laughs> no, I, I would never do that. Cirque wouldn't go along with it. My wife is a nonviolenter until she steps her, you know, stubs her toe into a table. And then, not so much. <laughs> and I've got advice for the people that are suffering from medical problems all over the world. And I stole this from the president's wife back in the day. <clears throat> I believe it was uh, Ford or Reagan, one of the other's wives. Just say no to doctors. Mary can do it if Mary can do it. Mary can't say no to a cookie salesman. You know, when the kids come around selling cookies, guess who they go to first? Mary. You know why? Because Mary can't say no. But you know what Mary said no to? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Statin drugs. She got into the medical very heavily a couple years back and started to really dig and research and look and read and, you know, because her, her mom's got serious problems with that sort of thing. So she got the truth out of the whole thing that suited her, that pleased her, that made sense to her. And now she seems to be like a rock because if you want to put yourself through that shit and go on the, you know, the. Rockefeller medicine programs. Mary will try to talk you out of it. <laughs> and my hat's off because I know how few people want to hear us crazy wackadoodles, you know, on the reallibertymedia.com, <laughs> voicing our vast knowledge and opinions about major issues because <laughs> everybody wants something different. I think that everybody wants what they want. And that's a matter of, hmm, where does that come from? I want my way, blah, blah, blah. You don't know anything. I know everything, blah, blah, blah. I don't think anybody knows nothing. Hmm. Uh, we lost Mental. Maybe Mental got the boot. I hope he comes back. Mental is a Saturday staple on the dork table when we, well, when we can get him because sometimes he's working. I have a few friends that stay close and then that's it. Uh, I'll tell you one thing. I miss Java Doctor, -ish, or not Java Doctor, <laughs> Wanda Taco. Sorry, I got your names confused because of the J. But Wanda Taco used to come hang out at the dork table all the time. Haven't seen him in months and months. Have no idea what I could have said to the guy to make him abandon us. But hmm. if it was me, I'd sure like to know what the fuck I said to make Java not hang out. So uh, maybe Vinny could find out. Vinny talks to him on another site. But me, I don't, I don't, I've got enough sites. I don't need popular and all that, you know, uh, big stuff. All that big stuff is too much for me. I like the small sites. I'm going to stay small. I'm always going to be small, so I'm just going to stay that way and just cut the middleman out. But let me see. In my page of notes here, uh, <laughs> Mary said something about the seats. I, I wanted to steal this from her. She called the seats of decision the seats of destruction. And I thought, ah, that's a catchy title. Everybody wants what they want. Dot, dot, dot. That's deep state, says Grimner. I've had a problem understanding what this deep state crap truly, what? The truth is right there in front of us. It's just not represented immediately that way. They tell you a couple stories first. Or 
even they did, sometimes they don't never clear up the, what the truth truly was to the public. But there's books written about it. People will make a link and describe it in detail. What it was, how it went, what it truly meant, not what you were told it meant. And it shows you that what you were told was not true. Or what you were told was manipulated to make what you're hearing sound good. Oh, we got Miss Kate talking to Grimner. Let's see. It wasn't you that made Wanna Taco leave Flash. Oh, well, that's good. I... Because I used to see him here all the time, and it's my show. So I thought, well, if he doesn't like me anymore, I don't know what I did. So I just kind of took it like a slap in the face and got all teary-eyed. And uh, Miss Kate says, I want to have enough cannabis to gift a pound to everyone. See, there you go. How long did that cartridge last? Because that's that's really what we're like, people, you know. The ones that aren't the selfish, greedy, insecure, uh, terrorized, oh, they're going to squirt semen on me and call me a... Those people can, you know, they can really drag down the, the curve. They can really make people feel nasty and terrible. And there's a lot of them in the world, I think. They're, and they got a loud voice. I don't know what that's about. Oh, speaking of weirdos. I have this thing I call the trifecta. Now, the trifecta is, as we all know, when three horses come in a race in the order you predict them. And I've got three members of the RLM, and when they come in order, the order that I predict them to, I call it the trifecta. But I never hit the trifecta. They always come in in weird order. Someday I'm going to figure out what order they're going to come in, and I'm going to call it, and I'm going to win the trifecta. And that trifecta is Gooberzilla, Vinny, and Hansel. And when they come in in a certain order of those three names, I ain't going to give away my names, my order of my names, but those three guys, when they come in in a specific order, I will have predicted I win the trifecta. Whoopty. Fucking dupty. See this? I guess that was a way to explain how when when we're disagreeing on the internet and we're typing all this cool shit back at each other and oh how fucked up you are and how smart I am. Nobody gives a shit. It's you. <laughs> Me. It got nothing to do with anybody else reading it. If anything, maybe it was that. Maybe the negative behavior that we like to exhibit sometimes in chat. It's things like that might have put somebody like uh, Juan Taco off and he didn't want to hang around. But I don't have that many hardcore, you know, listeners hanging in with my show in the first place because it's got such weird topics and horrible social ideas, what we should do, you know, like, fuck, quit lying, quit killing each other and grow some freaking cannabis and some hemp, people. Get... Go backward in time. Quit with this progress. The progress is going to destroy us. That's the problem. <laughs> They're experimenting on us. We don't know what these progress things are going to do. They, they've never tested them. <laughs> they're, just, they're just assuming the result's going to be whatever they tell you it's going to be. And you're going to go, okay. And so far we have. Except when you get into the, like, oh, the internet. Open up stuff. I've opened up stuff on Minds today that was about this guy is so paranoid about the 5G that he actually, there's a paint that the uh, 5G can't penetrate. I think it's the lead-based paint. Technically, or some, of the, some other name to it now. But it's basically that quality of a paint. And it was black. And he says, I'm going to cover the black with a different color. But this, this paint job on this house is to keep out the the eventual 5G that's coming. And he said on top of his roof, he was putting an aluminum mesh down on top of it and then throwing another roof on top of that so he can be protected from the, you know, whatever's coming at us because nobody knows. We're, we're hearing stories. And uh, some of the stories are pretty gruesome. I, re I was reading or heard something about it uh, guy in Canada was saying uh, he was military, blah, 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 worked in electronics. And he says that 5G is a weapons-grade electronics they used where he worked in his weapon department 
energy weapons. <laughs> energy weapons. Are these... Uh, how can it be possible that we live in such a... a just a, a shit fuck age that whatever you can make a weapon out of to hurt somebody else with is that that's a finance boy invest in that we'll put money in that all fucking day long create a way to grow a vegetable without poisoning whoever eats it 50 60 people might want that but invade iraq invade iran invade afghanistan syria North Korea, Cuba, anywhere like that. Oh, fuck. They love that shit. Let's go fuck them up. Wow. But if you want to grow some food that's edible or deliver an electricity on a source that doesn't cause waste and destroy what you're doing, no, we can't have that. We must have war. War and problems and debt and poison and, oh, man, some people. Those people that ate the spaghetti are probably now craving more human meat, says Grimnir. Ah, there's a cannibal killer slaughtered and ate 23 pizza delivery men. I saw that last week. <laughs> I didn't open it. I don't, I don't think it's like, well. If it's true, I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't go to the grocery store without somebody on the street I live on noticing I walk by. How do people manage to... Uh, live in, in a society and, and kill multiple times over multiple years and oh they just happen to know hey, seven years goes by and hey I finally got caught hey who noticed I can't I can't make sense of all this I think a lot of that uh, is exaggerated crap to sell newspapers and keep people afraid not that there aren't you know psycho fucks out there that do horrible shit but that most of them are wearing badges and you know uniforms. You know where they're at. It's not like there. There's a union of those fuckers. To see, you see them coming, you know what they're going to do to you. Asset forfeiture, you know, something. Oh, you looked at me funny. You made me afraid for my life. I have to shoot you. You're. I'm a cop. So anyway, ridiculous shit like that. Oh, now Miss Kate, morgue worker arrested after giving birth to a dead man's baby is a must-read. <laughs> giving, okay, a uh, dead man's baby. I don't know how to just, dis- yeah, you'd have to open that. Should I open that and read it? Best cannibal movie ever, says Grim. The Ravenous, oh, Ravenous. <laughs> anyway. This is what happens when I'm unattended on a dork table all by myself. And uh, <laughs> this morning I was just thinking about, you know, how the, the crumbs off the, the wealthy table are distributed to the poor by, by Trump. And they don't consider themselves poor, right? Now, this guy claims he's got $10 billion. But the guy that's got, you know, an, an, an income of, say, a quarter of a million dollars a year, he considers himself comfortable, maybe. But rich? Are you kidding? you got to go into some serious fucking debt. To be considered rich nowadays. Rich is so far beyond what we'll ever know or see. It's not, you can't explain it. Like that fucking uh, Pelosi bitch, right? I think her personal fucking wealth is like $200 million. Because, you know, well, some inside trading came along and, well, sure. she Look who she is. Speaker of the freaking house. Uh, 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 uh doesn't matter what they tell us it matters i don't know what matters it's just these same fucking people have been in these same seats of destruction thank you mary for a long fucking time making money hand over fist traveling all over the freaking world and they've got you know their entourage that travels with them and this and that and the other and then there's everybody else looking up to them like there's some fucking oh i wish i was her <laughs> I don't know what the appeal is. So I'm, I'm imagining what the, the onlooker would think. Uh, I think that when you have too much, you're just another thief. Hmm. Yeah, flash unsupervised is always dangerous. Well, it's difficult. It's more difficult to do a show alone than it is to do it with somebody else. That's all. But... I tried to smoke, but man, she rolled this one a little too. She forgets I'm, uh, 
I'm not as experienced with the hashish as she is. So sometimes she rolls them a little too strong for my delicate little lungs to handle. And I tried to smoke it at 420, but I couldn't. <laughs> it creamed me right away. I have to do that one after the show and do it really slow. It's hard to do that when I'm on the radio talking to people and thinking I'm shit and whatnot. So I abandoned my marijuana podcast and decided to go smokeless today. But it strikes me that you got the same damn result no matter how you look at it. I'm still all over the place. <laughs> I can't stay focused. I always blame it on something, though. I can't just be like, a, you know, like George Bush and just take responsibility. I need a scapegoat. Who can I blame for my problems? That's what I want to do. <clears throat> yeah, nope, maybe not. Oh, there's a <clears throat> another meme I liked. There's one test I want to see. That's the vaccinated versus unvaccinated study. And until you do that, don't ever try to convince me that these vaccines are safe. Because, wow, how do you get any more clear than that? You know, how, how do people fall along with, well, we don't know, but we're going to find out. <laughs> no, that's not proof. That's theory. But we, we live on theory. Oh, the world's round. Oh, the world's flat. Oh, the world's on the back of a snail. Who get, I, 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 Here we go with all that. But to me, I, it doesn't matter. To other people, who find it quite important to know what exactly we're living on. But does a flea know it's living on a dog <laughs> or a squirrel, you know, or whatever? Does it, or maybe if it's on an elephant, <laughs> what difference does it make to the thing living on the thing, what the thing is, if the thing is surviving? And I think we were like hijacked somehow to be all concerned about. All this shit that doesn't matter, so that when you hear something about regenerative farming, what the fuck is that? Sounds like one of those conspiracy theorists, uh, nonsense, those damn hippies. They're always trying to make the big people look bad. Well, then, we've been hearing this for since this freaking shit started in the 60s. Now that's all gone. I think uh, we still got people mocking the hippie generation on the RLM. Well, maybe not people. A, maybe well, an individual. Huh. Well, not really individual either. How do you? I'm not sure how to explain this one. Uh, a a voice that is type. Well, not even a voice. You won't make links. Well, we see type from somebody that claims that all that stuff is good that society does. Hmm. I never see anybody really agree with it, but. You know, I guess if you don't read what people type back to you, you can't be pissed off about it. I'm not really sure. I'm just trying to be a creative genius in a world of holy shit, Miss Cape. I just read, FBI seizes over 3,000 penises. I hope they weren't connected at the time of the acquisition. But, you know, the FBI don't know with those people. <sighs> anyway. I want a clean globe or, you know, not necessarily clean. But it could be clean if we just stop doing a few ignorant things. And uh, there's a lot of people that know, hey, burning oil is not a good idea. They're clear on that. What they're not clear on is that whatever you replace it with, in, if it's uh, okay with this, the government and, like Mary, <laughs> the the seats of destruction, uh, then it's not going to happen because they're not going to replace oil. I'll guarantee you, in my lifetime, there will not be enough people to stand up together and say, no more oil to stop oil. You're going to always have is people going, I need gas to get to work or they're going to take my house. What are you going to do? You know, you're held captive. There's no freaking choice in this game. We just want to believe there's a choice, you know. Get on the radio and offer a choice. But there's no way it's ever going to come to anybody actually physically doing something to change this thing. That that wheel got cracked in 1970, what, 70, I think. 
that will never happen in, in our life. If I'm going to predict anything, I would predict more of the same, if not worse, with a little hope to benefit. Unless you're already comfortable financially, you're not going any fucking where in the future. The future's going to just suck you up like a biscuit and some gravy. You're gone. And that shows itself to me because we have tent cities, immigration problems, shit like that. These are all government-made problems. These problems wouldn't exist if government would stay the fuck out of human life and just leave us alone. But what they did, <laughs> they were sneaky. They did it over a couple of generations. You know, they creeped in a toe here, a, toe, a little bit more, a little bit more. Hey, move over. We got some more stuff coming in. And to the chat, no, I don't read it, Flash. I'm just finding the headlines amusing, <laughs> says Miss Kate. Oh, I know. Someone's making money create. No, nobody's. There's the illusion. We all live with it. And for whatever reason, because of, I guess, the physical reality, it carries weight in the daily mind that, that, that any of this shit is real. It's something that's real to me cannot be taken away from you. If it was real, it would belong to me. Nobody else in the world could touch what belongs to me. So what could that possibly be? It's not external. <laughs> Can't possibly own something outside of me because other people can still fuck with it. So I guess the only thing in this world that I own hmm, would probably be my signature. Everything else seems to... I share it with somebody or... I loan it to somebody or whatever, but there's very little in life I'm so selfish with that it's mine, 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 mine. The only thing I could come up with is my signature. Hmm. Or maybe I just haven't done enough reading and research to make a, <laughs> an informed decision. <laughs> now, here's another crappy headline that's not possibly true. Oregon has so much extra pot it could take years to smoke it. I don't think so. There's 7 billion people on the planet. <clears throat> you know, just start handing out joints. It'll go. <laughs> I don't care how much you got. Just set a team of rollers and start passing the joints. <laughs> Do that for about a week. Hand them off, hand them off, hand them off. And then light up on Sunday. <laughs> You'll find out how much pot they got. This is a huge planet. <laughs> this is ridiculous. See, in one respect, this is the, the sneakiness and then how nasty these fucking people are. Is they'll create a, a glut or, or they'll create a shortage. Now, here's one of your paper gluts. There's no way. They're going to claim that. No, I don't believe them. But I am a little hard to deal with on a Saturday dork table sometimes. Ask Vinny. Anyway, that's about enough out of me for today. Thanks a lot, folks, for uh, coming and hanging with me on the Dork Table solo. I really do like to do the Dork Table with other people more. And, uh, like Tuesday night, do the um, In a Perfect World with Vincent. But I got my own thing that I did design to do solo, and now I'm coming up with more solo shit than I really had ever intended to do. I am in a dilemma. And, as you all know, I'm not a very popular dork, so I have a lot of trouble getting hostages to do radio with me. I'm very unpopular in the radio world with my fellows. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot, everybody. And the coming up lineup this week, we have coming in the morning. Mr. Grimner will be doing uh, blues in the morning into the trivia game and i play a little trivia so i recommend if you're a nerd you got a little nerd in you oh if you feel a little competitive uh check out the trivia game on sunday on the real liberty media and then that leads into hal anthony at three o'clock does from behind the woodshed puts a little common sense into your head then Monday at 7 o'clock on the East Coast, Grimner comes back with leftovers, grim leftovers on top of it. That's the stuff he was trying to get to on Friday night when he did the Freakers Ball, but he just ran out of time. And then Tuesday, 1 o'clock on the East Coast, I come in with Vincenzo, and we do In a Perfect World. Now, Vinny's threatening to take off for a, few, for a bit in the summertime, so... 
I guess I don't know if I should drop the show or or what. Well, I'll talk to Grim about it. Do it solo, but oh man, Vinny was half of my radio hostage program, and I'm losing hostages. Then Wednesday and Friday at seven, you got Grammy Mary doing the Rocket Chair podcast. Uh, seven o'clock on the East Coast, and then Thursday night I'll be back with twenty uh, percent off. <laughs> And Friday at 1 o'clock on the East Coast in the afternoon, we should have a Ponder Gander with Vincent. But who knows? And then into Mary at 7 on the Rock Chair, and then into the cornerstone of the RLM, the Freakers Ball, 11 o'clock on Friday nights on the East Coast. And uh, that's enough for me. Thanks a lot, everybody that did manage to find a few minutes to check in with me this week. Over... And out.